Cherry Amoda 5 is finally here in Sydney and this is a very first impressions hands-on video from me, yours truly, Dmitry of MG Owners Australia. I drive MG, I drive Havel, I drove LDV D90 and now I am here in Cherry to provide the first initial, hopefully very objective and balanced opinion on what the car feels like before we do any deep dives and that kind of stuff. So let's jump straight into this. Uh, I personally, I like the car. I do like the car as opposed to the popular belief. I have um, sort of translated the videos from Russians who have disassembled this car and I did not think personally, I agreed with the reviewers from Russia, that the car was built for Russian conditions, for snow, for heavy kind of use on the road and other kind of stuff. Watch those videos if you would like context. But for Australia, with slightly milder conditions, our main problem is heat, really, here in Australia. I do think that, in, in all honesty, for this price range, that they have hit, I think, the nail on the head, Cherry Australia. They priced the car appropriately, in my opinion. Yeah, compared to how they did in Russia, which was a fail, an epic fail, in my humble opinion. Now, uh, how does the car feel? The car feels good it's very good and again we have to see i always keep saying to my audience you have to understand um, what are you getting for certain price so you're paying in the ballpark of around thirty thousand dollars for this car this is i think for a thirty thousand dollars a very fair uh, product proposition it has its pluses it has some of potential minuses but i have not spent enough car enough time in this car to tell you with certainty but I can offer you what my initial observations are over here. First of all, initial first impression when you look into this car, when you look outside, when you look inside, uh, looks are subjective inside and inside, design and exterior. I like both. I like what it looks like from the outside and I like what it looks like from the inside. It makes you feel like a bit of a space age. It makes you feel a little bit like they're taking a stab at the curvy kind of well slightly curved this one is a bit more flat frontal dash panel with the screens here kind of similar to what kia is doing these days with sportage with higher models of sportage which are exorbitantly more uh, expensive than this uh, so that all of that hits you on a sensory kind of level you're like getting into it you look into it and like wow oh wow, wow i'm getting all of this that is all very good let's call it for what it is it's awesome for this kind of money it's awesome um to balance, to balance feedback here on this, and we will be going back and forth like this, hopefully it works for you, um, uh, it does feel a bit plasticky. It does feel a bit plasticky, even comparing to MG HS, even comparing to my Havel H6, even comparing to MG ZST. It does feel a bit plasticky everywhere. It is very nicely designed, seemingly. It kind of has everything within the reach and some elements I will highlight to you which are fantastic. I think Cherry did a much better job than other companies did so far. I like the bucket seats. I haven't spent enough time in them test driving the car. This is just a quick initial impressions kind of video. But I do think that the bucket seats are very comfortable. Um, is, this, is this immediately making me feel like the bucket seats of MGHS? No, no. But they are comfortable. They're okay. I think that they're okay. This is a top of the range Cherry or Moda 5. Um, this, this one has a manually operated uh, sunroof, not sunroof itself, but the shade. The shade is manually operated. The sunroof is obviously electrically operated. We're not going to open it right now. It's a bit of a gloomy day, but the shade is manually operated. What I like about this shade, as opposed to the one from H MGHS and MGZST, if we keep comparing, is that this one is dark. It's quite dark. Nothing comes through. As soon as this is closed, this is dark. That's a big benefit. That's a big benefit of Cherry Moda 5 compared to those cars. It's a small thing, but you know what? In Australian sunny conditions, we are exposed to heat. Remember how I said that to you? I think that this is a, an important point to make, okay? Now, speaking of plastic, let's come back to plastic because in all honesty, all in all, my only issue so far from spending, you know, a little bit more than five minutes, yes, it was more than five minutes, but a little bit more than five minutes with this car so far, my main and only issue is the fact that it's plasticky and the plastic seems to be creaking a little bit as you drive. This is a brand new car. Somebody will say that it's not broken into kind of thing. And by that, I mean, it hasn't been driven around for all panels to settle properly and stuff. It's probably fair. It's probably fair. And I'm acknowledging it up front. 
but honesty for honesty I just took a car for a test drive it's a brand new car and uh, I drove many <laughs> brand new cars and as you drive just even right now I think I heard it as I was recording the, the video but as you drive even on the tiniest bump you hear fairly frequently you hear a little bit of that plastic against plastic a bit of that you don't know where that sound is coming from somewhere here somewhere there I can't tell you exactly which one of these panels but but these panels must be very plastic I'm trying to press right now so that you can maybe hear through the microphone of a bit of that plastic give can you hear it that's what I'm talking about there is a bit of that plasticness to it in addition to it I'm kind of looking here at this central panel which design of which I think is fantastic it's a highly lifted panel it's easy to access everything with the hand your elbow is resting as you're driving and as Havel, Havel did it's much better than MG Havel wins here and Cherry win here together together they have this uh, they have this rather again very plasticky compared to Havel doesn't feel so plastic in Havel but it has this very convenient shelf kind of underneath so it's like I think they refer to it as drive drive by wire or something that they didn't need all this bulk uh, pr reserved for some sort of mechanicals instead there is a electronics wire somewhere here yeah and that that you know creates certain momentum there as the, the, the car drives um, so it's convenient ergonomically very nice I absolutely love 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 these two panels that are for the phones everybody knows that we're driving with our phones and everybody knows that we're not allowed to touch the phones often when I drive my Havel there are shelves there all that kind of stuff but my phone kind of has to be tucked in somewhere and I have to sometimes make a extra effort to see what's happening on it because even if I'm not touching it I still want to see what message came in that's just a normal thing let's acknowledge it that's what we do without touching the phone over here this is front and center and the designers did a very very good job of saying what do you need in the car other than your dash other than your anything uh, you need to see your phone and they made it very very easy at a slope with a wireless charger didn't work on my phone but I think it's just my phone's capabilities as opposed to this charger so wireless charging um, wireless unlock other kind of stuff all of this is integrated here into this smart panel I have not compared the technicalities and specifications but that's what it is I also am not going to demonstrate to you today but my person at the dealership has shown me very cool very impressive built-in into this electronic panel built-in electronic manual of the commands that the car understands as voice commands so you can tell it like you can say hey cherry and right now it's not listening but you can say hey cherry can you open the boot and it will open the boot and there is a whole bunch of other reference commands I think car needs to be on for, for it to do it do you want to do it let's do it together so I started the car first of all you can hear well the air conditioning is blasting right now so that would be a little bit um, a little bit loud there are sensor sensor buttons by the way similar to Havel Jolian not not Havel H6 in terms of to turn on echo and all that kind of stuff seems to be working fine I'm, I'm, I'm right now tapping on this it responds fairly nicely here we are reducing the aircon a tiny bit yeah uh, by the way no electronic lane keep assist system interfered with my driving hello Havel um, hey cherry not listening hey cherry open the boot nope doesn't want to talk to me but it did talk to my friend there at the at the cherry dealership so it does work it does work maybe it wants the right voice maybe it's not but treat it as an on-the-spot demonstration whatever what else can I say to you as first impressions obviously it's gonna be a very too long of a video if I try to embrace the unembraceable and talk to you about everything I can't I can't talk to you about everything but I can tell you that other than this plastic creaking stuff the car feels nice it's a smallish car though I can tell you that for a small family young family of two people and maybe one child in a in a child restrained seat at the back this is perfect this is perfect or for just a couple of two perfect stylish seems to drive nicely has enough power this is a turbo petrol 1.5 liter engine with CVT not DCT yay I hate DCT 
but this uh, drives nicely, seems to have enough power, it's not a race car, again, fits okay on our, on our roads, I think. Other than this plastic creaking inside, everything seems to be quite well designed, yeah. But it's smallish. So if you are a bigger family, family of four, you have teenage kids, you have actually mom to put there at the back or something, I would dare say that this probably is a bit small, too small for that purpose. And if someone, especially largish person, tallish person, sits here in the passenger seat or is here in the driver seat, and they would like to move a little bit further back, yeah, you can see the, the you can see the, the seat sliding. I do think that this is gonna be not very convenient for people at the back over there. I don't think so, I don't think so. Other than that, for two people here in the front, you kind of feel like a king and a queen. Uh, the, I, think it's, I think it's nice. The driving position, speaking of driving position, again, I think the car has enough power. Um, the driving position is nice, visibility is perfect, very, very good visibility, elevation of the seat is good, visibility is very, very nice in the back, to towards the mirrors, e can't complain, everything seems perfect to me. Um, the dash over here, I do think, now upon closer reflection, other than the promotional material that we took a look at, I think it's a little bit on a gimmicky, I'm sorry, Cherry, on a gimmicky side, and why I'm saying this? is because you have this massive thing and you think all of it will come to life and all of it will light up with uh, useful information. But first of all, sat-nav, built-in sat-nav, is not available, even on the top model, even as an option, it's not available. So that automatically tells you that, yes, of course there is Android Auto, of course there is Apple CarPlay, and I'm being told, and I can't test it right now, that Apple CarPlay is wireless, which is cool, very cool. Android Auto, however, is wired. Why? I don't know, but apparently other brands do that too. So, but that is an insight, take it for what it is. But still, uh, so there is no built-in sat-nav, which some might see as a, as a negative. I kind of never relied on the built-in sat-nav of MG HS or MG ZST because it's too slow anyway. This electronics, by the way, as far as operation is concerned, seems responsive, seems like it's definitely a faster chip, that uh, computer chip, whatever, operates this thing, so seems responsive. Cameras, 360 degree cameras, are not as good as in Havel so far from what I've seen very briefly, but workable and better than MG ZST. Definitely better. High quality, better designed UI, immediately tries to turn, uh, turn on this 3D effect when you're turning, for example, when you are stopped at the intersection and you turn the, uh, the you know, you want to turn, that's when it comes on. But, but why it's gimmicky? Because it shows to you this massive panel and not all of it is useful. It's kind of like massive black panel that's beautiful, kind of similar to Kia Sportage, expensive models, yeah? But then there are these insets of the actual screen in that massive panel. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not all of it being light up, lit, uh, like lit up and useful to you. Especially it becomes obvious in the main dash, in the main instruments of your odometer and your speedometer because there is this big panel, but those instruments are rather small. They are rather small. So they could, like, do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll, put, I'll, put a, I'll put a picture or a video on the screen for you to appreciate this, but it seems a bit small. It seems like it almost asks to be bigger to make use of this, of this uh, real estate, let's call it. And it's not, it's not. So those kind of things, and I'm not trying to be picky, I'm just trying to very quickly give you a quick impression. What do I think about Cherry Moda 5? First impression is positive. It's largely positive. It's a bit plasticky, a bit creaky, which might be, you know, broken into and uh, get a bit better as it all tightens up and stuff, but that is, that remains to be seen, yeah? Uh, drives nicely, enough, drives nicely. Uh, beyond that, what can I say? This is fake leather. This is not real leather. This is all fake leather, but the seats seem to be nice enough. My back is not hurting me yet. I like the driving position and I like the look of the car. So I encourage you to uh, maybe keep your mind open in terms of going to the dealership, sitting in the car, hopefully taking the car for a test drive before making a decision of buying another nice, new, with a good warranty car from a budget kind of brand, uh, like range of cars that are entering the market. The quality, the build quality, the reliability of these cars remains to be seen. All we can go off is 
by the fact that the brand itself existed for a long time in China. They have been exporting for a long time. I know that they haven't had an amazingly um, good proof, like uh, record of the quality of cars exported to Australia some 10 years ago. But 10 years ago is a long time ago. Time has passed and we need to move on with the program. That's what I that's what I live by myself and that's I try to be open-minded. I try to judge by how does the company, how does the brand evolve? Do they take feedback on board? Do they actually improve their product or are they stuck in the past a little bit and stuff like this? I don't know Cherry that well and no, I have not been invited to the official launch of the car where perhaps we would have been told a bit more. All I have to go by is this, what I can observationally tell you. And so far the impression is good, it's good. It didn't blow me away, it didn't blow me away. But I think it's solid. I think it's it's a it's probably a solid um, car for this price range, but you need to check if it's right for you. As with any car, do you like the seat? Do you agree with this uh, slightly wasted space on the front panels, but is this okay for you? Havel has also two screens. They're just not joined in one massive black thing here. So Havel's thing looks a little less fancy, but just as functional, for example. Those kind of things come to my mind. And I'm sure, my friends, especially if there is interest, I'm not a mind reader. Give the video a like if you're too lazy to comment. And talk to me in the comments if you're not too lazy to comment so that I know if you're interested to find out more. I'd be more than happy to spend more time with this car. Probably, again, visit my friends here at uh, Ride Cherry and take a look at the car a little bit closer, specific elements of it, so that I can provide more informed information for you. I thank you very much for tuning in today and for your interest. Please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll talk to you again about something else, Cherry, Howell, MG related, next week. Goodbye for now.